Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. January 24th, 2024. Let's get into it. So Redacted did a great video and I, I had not seen this. Uh, although I knew I knew it was taking place, and but I didn't understand the background on this. That uh, basically uh, the Ukraine government right now and their military is digging mass graves and dumping the uh, Ukrainian soldiers into these mass graves. Uh, it's absolutely horrible. And and so how did you think this information got out? Because the soldiers that are digging the mass graves are thinking, well, this might be me next. <laughs> We better try to get this out somehow. Maybe they got a, a connection to a VPN. You know, as, as I did my uh, cybersecurity update on Our Country, Our Choice. By the way, they'll be doing a live feed, uh, well, for, for members only, uh, tomorrow at 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. I, I prefer 1400, and then also you've got at uh, 2000 or at 8 p.m. Uh, I'll be watching the 8 p.m. I'm, I'm going to be out hiking uh, at 2 p.m. tomorrow. I'm actually making a hiking video, so that'll be the next video, hopefully coming up. Uh, so, but yeah, this was this was huge, and so these uh, missing soldiers. I mean, it gets even worse. What Redacted was port reporting was that uh, if if these soldiers are declared as missing, which obviously if they're sitting in a man mass grave somewhere, uh, they don't have to pay pensions to the family or any sort of compensation. And, uh, and so, finally, the Ukrainian women are, are getting livid, and uh, they're, they're kind of rising up as best they can. Uh, I, but, you know, can you imagine? And, and by the way, I, I, I finally, I'm very proud of the Ukrainians, because there are reports now that they are killing the recruiters. <laughs> These guys that are pressing dentists and doctors and everybody else into uniform to try to send them to the front lines, uh, they're ending up dead. So good for the Ukrainians, man. I, I'd be killing them sons of guns, wouldn't you? Somebody try to press me. I, you know, good Lord, I'm, I'm disabled. If they wanted to send me to the front lines, I, it'd be a death sentence. I wouldn't survive a week uh, on the front lines of any war. Uh, not at my current uh, condition. Uh, so what choice would I have? I, I'd kill the sons of guns. And so it sounds like that's what the Ukrainians are doing more and more. They're killing the uh, recruiters that are coming in. By the way, Trump, well, I, you know, it's, final results are not completely in when I'm making this video, but Trump wins New Hampshire with double-digit figures. Uh, so that is, uh, that's huge. Uh, I think that, uh, well, we got Neocon Nikki. <laughs> that's what I like to call her. Uh, she's just a repeat of uh, Hillary Clinton, in my opinion. We might as well call her uh, Nikki Clinton. And uh, so, anyway, I, I think that uh, this should be the end if she wants to go down. Well, she's already lost New Hampshire because they defaulted in New Hampshire, if you didn't realize. Uh, she didn't even campaign there. I mean, not New Hampshire, Nevada, excuse me, Nevada. And so then it goes on to South Carolina, and uh, evidently the people in South Carolina must hate her pretty bad. <laughs> so so they, 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 Trump's going to win by double-digit figures in uh, in. in South Carolina. So what's the point? I mean, you know, she just anyway. These these neocon lunatic uh, billionaires. Uh, they just want they they hate Trump. Oh, they hate Trump, man. I mean, I tell you what, uh, the the the, uh, the deep state hates Trump. Ah, uh, hell! I was watching the Economic Ninja. He says that credit defaults are at an all time high in the United States. Ah, uh, you know, I, all I can tell you, I in, in my personal opinion, is if you're carrying. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'd like, I've reported in many videos, I'm paying down my debt as fast as I can. Now, the only debts that I have are, I put in these $50,000 windows. Now, was it worth it? Well, I just survived the cold weather. It went down into the 20s here in Florida, and I have one little electric heater, <laughs> and it heated the whole house. I have 1,700 square feet, one little electric heater, because I got bulletproof windows, so if you don't tell me that the windows that these uh, construction companies put on houses are trash, uh, now has it been an ordeal? Yeah, I mean it was. I renewal by Anderson got to give them credit. They make great windows, but I'm going to tell you what they are the worst. 
as far as installing the windows or getting it done. The 29th, so the project started uh, July 22nd, uh, 2022, and supposedly they're coming this coming Monday, July 29th, uh, to finish the project 2024. So if you want new windows, <laughs> you better you better plan on a three-year project. Uh, but it's worth it. My God, I mean, I think of the, well, of course, now that I've got solar panels, I don't know, it's, I probably could have just stuck with, well, and of course, I, I, I have no gas. I got rid of Tico gas because I went totally electric. I'm just trying to help you out in, in certain kind of ways. Uh, these are things you might want to consider. I mean, how are you going to reduce your monthly expenses? It's very important. And how are you going to get off of these utility companies? Gas is going to skyrocket. I mean, we're looking at oil prices that are going to skyrocket. So uh, have you bought a hybrid car? Have you gotten rid of your gas guzzler? I mean, these are all things you need to be thinking about. All right. Just telling you. Uh, then we got into China. Good Lord. Today. I mean, they, they defaulted on six trillion dollars in debt. And what does this mean for the United States? I couldn't tell you. I'm not a financial analyst, but I mean, I'm going to tell you what happens around the world because it's a globalist world comes back home. So if China just defaulted on six trillion dollars in debt, how long? I mean, we got 34. Well, it's going to be 35 trillion dollars in debt here soon in the United States. How long before we try to default on six, ten trillion dollars in debt? What's your bank account look like? I, I, I bet you better be invested in uh, some commodities. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you know, I mean, that's, that's, and by the way, I, and, and I want to give you the good and the bad. So I put a lot of money into palladium. I, cause it, it was at $2,300 an ounce. I've lost $14,000. I just want to give you the number. I've lost $14,000 on that position, but I've offset that with my gains in other commodities. Right now, oil looks like a good place to go. Maybe ConocoPhillips, maybe Exxon. You do your own due diligence. This is not financial advice, <clears throat> but I'm just telling you, you know, you win some and you lose some. The, the important part is to win more than you lose. Right now, I hate to say it, I'm just holding steady. I haven't, I haven't won a lot. I haven't lost a lot. Uh, all I do is, is I, I gain a little bit each month, and, uh, and, and I'm the tortoise rather than the hare, okay? And that's the way I think you should invest. So uh, this is terrible. I mean, my God, I, I, and I've seen this multiple places. Ukrainian men are breaking their legs to avoid being sent to the front lines because that disqualifies them. But, I mean, how long, I mean, you know, how long before Ukraine just puts a crutch on them and just <laughs> puts a weapon in their hand and sends them into a trench somewhere and says, you know what, you might not be able to move because you got a broken leg, but you're still going to fight the Russians. I, I, you know, I, it, Ukraine is the most corrupt country on the planet. Does everybody understand that? That we're funding, the Biden administration is funding it? Now, why are we funding it? Found out today that this is, well, Ukraine was meant, and whether it will be, is meant to be the next um, colony of the United States, or, or I don't know what you call it, territory, the next territory of the United States. So when you look at like Puerto Rico, or uh, what's uh, the, the Virgin, I think the Virgin Islands, these are considered territories of the United States. So the plan all along was to make Ukraine a territory of the United States. Now, and, and they but basically, from what I understand, when, when the Zelensky was over here talking to them, they, they basically laid it on the line and said, yeah, because we, we, we've bought up BlackRock, uh, uh, Blackstone, you know, all of our, 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 our pension funds and everything have bought up all of the farmland in Ukraine. So the, the plan all along was to just turn Ukraine into a, a well, I mean, when you think about it, look at, look at the old uh, colonial empires. So they were they were going to be a colonial uh, conquest of the United States, and so don't tell me there wasn't a plan to kill off all the Ukrainian people so that we could just go in there and mop up all their resources, which we tried to do to Russia, but Russia uh, they they, <laughs> they put a stop to that, didn't they? Holy shit! Uh, so then we got um, 
Helos, well, I, I did a video on this uh, the other day uh, before my Our Country, Our Choice, uh, that, that they're bombing. Uh, and, and so, they, you know, I'm telling you right now on the front lines, not a lot to good news. I mean, you're not going to hear much about Ukraine in this video <clears throat> other than the Helos are, are they're entering the combat big time. And they are massacring the uh, Ukrainian troops. And I, I already talked about that. Uh, yesterday, they, they wiped out about 1,020, 1,005, excuse me, 1,005, you, just in Avdivka alone, uh, all along the lines. And, uh, and then, of course, Ukraine is, is putting missile strikes uh, into Russia. So uh, let's keep going. Um, Let's see, uh, women says maybe you should not, oh, yeah, this, well, this is on a personal note. <laughs> so today, you know, I have to balance my life. And uh, so I get out, you know, and I wake up and I say, okay, what am I going to do? Is it going to be laundry? Is it going to be the dishes? Am I going to get out and work in the yard? And of course, I've got to get my exercise. Always think about your exercise. So today, you know, I, I did a lot around the house, and then I went out hiking in the woods. And so then I'm coming, I'm coming back to my car, and this woman has this huge German Shepherd, and he's off the leash. And I stop, and I said, hey, please, put your dog, because I've been attacked by dogs. You ever been attacked by dogs? They're vicious, man. They are vicious. And I told her, I said, put your dog on the leash, woman. And she goes, hey, he's friendly. he's friendly. I said, I don't care if he's friendly. Put him on the leash. Boy, she took, she, and then she goes, she shouted to me. She said, if you don't want my dog to attack you, then you shouldn't be walking around here. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, I, I was ready to beat the crap out of her and that dog. But, of course, I'd probably go to jail. <laughs> So, but anyway, I just let them get on up in front of me, and this is what you got to do. Sometimes you got to retreat with stupid people. Uh, so, um, more Yemen strikes today. Uh, that's good. I'm glad that we're wasting million dollar missiles uh, to go into uh, Yemen. Uh, and Yemen came out with a huge statement saying, you know, we're not going to stop. We, we, we support the Palestinians, and uh, bring it on, United States. Bring it on, bring it on. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, wow, this was insane. Fetterman got his mind back. Uh, you know what? I thought he was just a vegetable. And, 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 and of course, I didn't agree with anything he has to say. But he's actually talking about the border a little bit. Uh, he's he's kind of making sense in a certain kind of way. But I'm sure he's going to vote with the Democrats. Because that's what Democrats do. They're the Borg. They're the Borg. They can, they can go out and voice all the things that you think make sense. And they're going to vote with the board. So, uh, wow, watching Dan Bongino today. He's going crazy on this. Remember, there was two pipe bombs. There was a pipe bomb in front of the Democrat uh, uh, headquarters, and there was another pipe bomb in front of the Republican headquarters. Well, it turns out that Kamala Harris was in the Democrat headquarters, and there was a pipe bomb sitting there, and he's got video of the whole thing, and he's going on about, you know, there were no robots that came in to take care of it. Obviously, it was just a plant he and bam bongino can't come out and say that because he's got you know hundreds of thousands of followers and he's got the media and the news i'll, I'll just tell you right now it's all a freaking hoax january 6 was a hoax it was a setup i mean if you don't know that by now i mean how the hell i mean I, you know what the i just anyway uh supreme court rules for open borders now it's not as bad as it looks what they were saying is that that the appellate court's are still hashing out their rulings on it. Uh, now, four justices voted for it, and uh, for the Texas, and and five justices voted against it. Uh, and boy, I tell you, this this woman. I mean, you know, well, if if you ever watch Viva Fry, <laughs> we we knew she was a, a wolf in sheep's clothing for the uh, for the Democrats. But uh, anyway, so the Democrats, uh, well, they actually admit it. Uh, and you know what, it, 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 this is, you know, if you go back in my videos, uh, and I've posted it multiple times, I made the best videos ever about how the Democrat, I mean, the Democrats were the uh, party of slavery in the Civil War, and most people have forgotten that because they don't know history. And I told you that the Democrats hate blacks, and they hate minorities. They're the most racist people on the planet. And, uh, and so now they've admitted they're replacing blacks 
as a voting block by bringing in all the illegal immigrants. And they're giving the illegal immigrants, I mean, it's funny as hell because in Chicago right now, they're actually putting the illegal immigrants into all of the places that they promised the blacks would be like, you know, uh, uh, centers for learning or, uh, or places where they, they would have a, uh, you know, a, a recreation center. Uh, and, and they're telling the blacks, F you, we got a new voting block. <laughs> and, uh, and so the blacks are too stupid. Well, I shouldn't say too stupid. They've just been deceived. Uh, they've been deceived into voting for Democrats. But, they, but the thing is, they're still going to vote Democrat. Even though they know now that they're, they're, they're being pushed aside uh, in, in favor of the illegal immigrants because the, the, the Democrats don't want them no more. They always hated blacks. I mean, they've they, been the party of hatred. They hate them. They hate the United States. Oh, my God. Don't get me started. Uh, Kamala Harris says, uh, let's move in a... Well, we got... She, and this is, this is another admission. She says, let's move uh, all of the uh, illegal immigrants to a path to citizenship so that they can vote Democrat. <laughs> I mean, she said, they say it right out in the open. And the blacks don't even understand it. You know, I, oh, my God. So, uh, and then, of course, uh, Garland Nixon, he did a huge video on illegals in the military. Well, why do you want illegals in the military? Because, you know, if, if, if it's your brother, or your sister, or your, you know, somebody from Tennessee or whatever, and the elite tell them, those protesters out there, fire on them. And uh, do you think that me as a soldier would fire on U.S. citizens? Hell no, I would never do it. I would say that's an illegal order, and I'd turn around and, and say, you know what, uh, I either drop my weapon or, you know, we, we need to get you out of power. Well, illegal immigrants, do you think they're going to hesitate to shoot American citizens? <laughs> Hell no. I mean, and we got Democrats. All the Democrats are calling for illegal immigrants in the military because their recruiting numbers are way down by design, okay, because they know no patriots want to serve in today's military. Uh, so they're going to give them uh, machine guns, and uh, when, when the Proud Boys or the Oath Takers or whoever come in to protest, uh, the illegal immigrants in the military are going to mow them down, baby. They're going to mow them down. Uh, the Gaza bombing continues. That's, uh, that's horrible. Uh, I, I think we're up to 35,000 dead civilians and probably about 15,000 dead children. How Christians in the United States are for this, I don't even understand it. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me, but you know they live in their little uh, little, little cubby holes, and guess what? It's going to come back to haunt you. Uh, well, we got more information on the French that were killed in the uh, Ukraine uh, because Macron <laughs> he went a little crazy. I guess there was an unwritten rule between Russia and France, and of course the NATO nations that Russia wouldn't kill the NATO troops. Well. When Ukraine or the French, they, they were saying the French was behind it, more or less, is that when they bombed that, the Donetsk uh, and killed 25 civilians and injured 100, uh, they, they, they took the gloves off and they just, boom, just launched right in and killed those uh, French mercenaries. Well, it turns out there were a lot of high-ranking French officials there. So, uh, you know, it's, it's something else. I uh, hearing a lot of uh, people calling for Vivek uh, Ramaswamy to be uh, the vice president. No, no, we don't want him as vice president. Just like we don't want Tucker Carlson as vice president. Tucker Carlson is much better off in his media role. Uh, uh, you know, uh, good Lord, he gets a million views every time he puts a video up. Why would we want him as vice president? He, the cuffs would be on him at that point. The deep state would shut him down. You don't want Tucker Carlson in there. Same with Vivek. Vivek is, uh, he's kind of the pretending, or maybe uh, is, the, the mirror of Trump. We want him for the RNC chair. We've got to get that uh, rhino, Ronna uh, McDaniel, Ronna Romney, excuse me, she's a Romney. Remember that Romney is a rhino. We need to get her the hell out of there and put, we'll put Vivek in there, and uh, I think he'd be good. Uh, a lot of people are calling for... Um, DeSantis to be the Secretary of Defense. Hell no. Hell no. Ron DeSantis needs to remain as governor here in, the, in Florida. He's doing a great job, man, and this is a big state. I mean, it's kind of like California. You know, that 
I whether whatever you want to say. I mean, Gavin Newsom uh, gives uh, well through. I think illicit means <laughs> California to the Democrats, just like Ron DeSantis gives uh, Florida to the Republicans. We don't want uh, Ron DeSantis out of that position. Maybe not until 2028. We'll maybe maybe run him again then for president. But no. So who do we want for secretary? We want Douglas McGregor. Our country, our choice. Douglas McGregor for secretary of defense. That's just my opinion. So, in, the, in another thing is, where the hell is Austin? <laughs> Has anybody heard from him? I don't even know where the hell that guy is, man. I, well, last I heard, prostate cancer, he's in the hospital. I uh, get maybe he's still laying in his hospital bed uh, making decisions. Uh, you know, if you had a healthy government, that, uh, that there would have been a transition of power over to somebody that knew something. Uh, but no, we haven't heard anything. So, the rhino, Greg Abbott, uh, and by the way, he's a rhino. I mean, don't, he never shut down the border. He could have shut it down long ago. He said, could have sent in the National Guard. So what's happening now? And why is it happening? And let me explain this to you. He's seeing the writing on the wall. Trump, Trump's coming up. Trump's winning. Trump's saying that the border is a, is a huge problem. So now the rhino, uh, Greg Abbott, he's going to get on board and he's going to say, oh, yeah, yeah, the border, the border, you know, it's, it's an important issue. Uh, and, well, that's good. You know, why people do things, uh, as long as they're doing the right thing, I don't care what their motives are. Let's just put it that way. I'm glad that Greg Abbott is working on the border. So anyway, uh, so we got a confrontation down there. Now that the Supreme Court it says that the, the federal government, if you didn't know, they're going in and they're pulling up the razor wire or trying to. And the National Guard in, in Texas is saying, oh, hell no. So and they're both armed. They both got guns. So who knows? Maybe we'll see a confrontation. And that would be a beautiful thing. I don't want people to die. But I think that the states need to make a statement that the federal government does not rule all and be all in the universe. The states, that's what the way the country was designed. The states are supposed to have the greater say than the federal government. Uh, German farmers continue to protest. And, uh, and by the way, I, the, I, I just don't see it going anywhere. I mean, they're ruled by globalists. And like uh, Joe Biden said, uh, he said, let them march. These globalists, they don't care. I mean, you can march till you're blue in the face. You can freeze to death on the streets. You can have fires, just like the Canadian truckers did in Canada. It's just not going to do no damn good. At least that's the way I feel about it. Until you're willing to take a little bit more um, aggressive action, let's just say. I'm not, I'm not promoting violence. I'm just saying maybe... Uh, Maybe just walk right up into those Capitol buildings and just uh, sit on the floor and say, yeah, you know what? Uh, we're going to poop in here. We're going to pee in here. We're going to pee all over your, uh, your, uh, your Capitol building. You know, uh, we're going to throw poop. I'm just like the farmers in, in Paris. We're, we're shooting poop <laughs> onto the buildings. There's peaceful ways that you can go about uh, protesting. Uh, but you need to be a little bit more aggressive than just standing on the streets, banging your drums and going, yeah, we need to, we need to protest. So, uh, I, and, and, and the other thing was uh, France is now looking at building, uh, what is it, a, like a $64 billion power plant that's based on, uh, well, they said gas. That was redacted. And I don't understand gas because the United States blew up the Nord Stream port pipeline, so... How the hell is France supposed to get gas? <laughs> I don't know. I just assume it's probably a coal-powered power plant. Uh, they had cheap energy from Russia, but yet, you know, their, their globalist leaders decided that uh, they were going to fight Russia. Anyway, that, oh, let's get into a couple of uh, uh, marks here. Uh, Simplicius the thinker, he's always great. I hope these morons realize the first thing that will happen in a NATO-Russia war is the satellites would come down. Well, yeah, Russia would take down our satellites. And then he points out, and I thought this was a great point, and NATO would be fighting blind. Do they know how to fight blind? Russia does. Russia uses artillery grids every day to hit enemies without any satellite assistance. 
Has NATO ever even ever even heard of an artillery bustle, B-U-S-S-O-L, or have any clue how to use one? NATO would be useless without satellites, no communications, no GPS-guided PGMs, no C-4 ISR. NATO doesn't want that war. They'd lose badly. Well, yeah, NATO would just resort to nukes, and then the whole world dies. So, anyway, we'll see where that goes. We got 90,000 troops, as I pointed out in a previous video, massing in Finland to go fight the Russians. We'll see where that happens. Here's a geo, man. Panic plan of the West. The United States will move the capital of Ukraine to Liev after the defeat of the Russian armed forces by the Russian army. This is what I was talking about, the plans for Ukraine from the United States. Asia, this is Asia Times, citing sources in the Pentagon. I, well, I mean, you know, you got to understand, China's got some huge influence within the Pentagon. Uh, I imagine they've got a lot of good intelligence sources in, in the federal government. Uh, having exhausted all its forces and arsenals to support Ukraine, the West uh, frantically decided to change its strategy. The United States and Europe are essentially ready to accept defeat of the armed forces of Ukraine at the front, analysts say on the pages of Asia Times. Wow, and this is published in China. <laughs> Who knew? And uh, the new Ukraine policy has been taking shape in recent months to cope with the new reality that Ukraine will lose the war, the war and, and Kiev will likely need to be evacuated. And the head of Maine Intelligence Directorate, well, we already knew about, well, if you haven't been watching the Duran, you wouldn't know because they're, they're removing uh, Zaluzhny and they're putting their, their spy chief, the, uh, the, SSS, uh, the SS commander, uh, Badunov, B-U-D-A-N-O-V, uh, will be appointed commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian troops, establishing effective control over Banudov and the trans transfer of the capital of Ukraine probably to Lavov is the basis of this policy. So let me add a little context to that. So uh, basically what they're going to try to do is, is go into an Afghan model. And, you know, I have to understand the Taliban were scattered all over and they just basically conducted a guerrilla warfare on the United States. It was no longer huge artillery uh, going back and forth or armies marching in or huge amounts of uh, equipment going back and forth. So this is this is where the war is headed. So they're, they're basically going to turn this into guerrilla warfare. Uh, so that's what the West has planned. Uh, this this is an interesting one. This is from OSINT Defender. Uh, Abu Ala Al Walla, the leader of Iranian, well, it's always Iranian backed. <laughs> Why can't they say the Yemen government? But anyway, so uh, Yemen backed militia, Katalib Sayyid Sayyad Al Sarhada has called for the Islamic resistance, including Iran, Hezbollah, and the Houthis in Yemen to begin their next phase of operations against Israel and U.S. forces in the region as a response to tonight's airstrikes on facilities belonging to, and of course, I always, Iranian-backed forces across Iraq. So we can see this thing, is, it's expanding. And then uh, the last uh, one I'll read to you for this video. Man, I tell you, I didn't mean to get this long. The most powerful line of defense of the Ukrainian armed forces near Avdika fell. The former air defense base in the north of Donetsk is under full control of the Russian army. The Russians are developing an offensive. Every day we receive more and more updates about the colossal losses of the armed forces of Ukraine and new achievements of the Russian armed forces. So make of that what you will. And uh, so some of these I have to, uh, I, well, go back because you know don't want to repeat previous videos so uh i guess i don't know i don't know what to say i mean the whole world's gone batshit crazy hasn't it <laughs> it's just me i i make these videos and i get 16 32 52 sometimes eight thousand people that watch them and it just doesn't seem to make much difference in the world but i uh, i feel like i'm obligated to do it so anyway, peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.
Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down.